Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Alpha Polaris. This is an adventure game, and before I go any further, let me read the description for just what it's about. Okay. In the midst of in the midst of the snowfields of Greenland lies Alpha Polaris, an American oil research station. High above, the ion storm of the century is gathering, bringing about a strange intermixing of reality and night terrors. It is up to Rune Nudsen, a Norwegian biologist, to take on a desperate struggle against fear and death, and to face the primordial force lurking beyond the veiled sky. And there's a little quote here from the project leader that I like. This comes from the website, by the way. The heart of the game is its restrained horror setting. It allows us to explore a wide range of human themes in a realistic way. Paranoia, isolation, friendship, love, and so on. To us, that is the core of a good horror adventure. That's from Project Leader Timu Vil... I don't know, I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> yeah, I've not played this game before. This this is just like Cryostasis and Martian Gothic. This is another game that you probably haven't heard of, and even if you have, you probably haven't played it. However, there's something different about this from the previous games. One, I haven't played it before, so I don't know what to expect. And two, it's actually very recent. Usually if a game is kind of obscure and not very well known, it's typically kind of old. Not so in this case. So let me explain how I found it, or how I... why I'm playing it. Okay, so I've been playing Martian Gothic and Cryostasis, and I've been thinking about adventure games and sci-fi and horror, and I've been talking about how I love sci-fi horror movies and games and things like that. And... Just, I was hit with a flash from the past of this game. I didn't know what it was called at the time, though. I just remembered... Like, I remembered reading an article on Rock, Paper, Shotgun about an adventure game. It was set in some sort of a snowy climate. It involved horror. And... Some sort of ancient evil or something. And that was it. And I, like, tore my hair out and spent a half hour tracking this damn thing down. And I finally found it. And to my incredible surprise... I was thinking it's a really old game or something, right? Because that's why I couldn't find it. No. This came out in 2011. It only came out two years ago. And yet, it's practically unknown. I, I'm i amazed that in this day and age of Steam and the internet and everything, that a game that's only two years old can be practically unknown. I mean, I was specifically looking for it, and I it took me a half hour to find it's buried, and it's only two years old, and it's on the freaking internet. That's so weird. I didn't know that was even possible. It, it makes me wonder what other games I'm missing. There's got to be some out there. There has to be. So yeah, what attracted me to it is just that it's an adventure game. It's sci-fi, and it's got a little bit of horror mixed into it, which I freaking love. And, well, it's set in Greenland in an... what is it? An oil research station? Yeah. An American oil research station, which really, really reminds me of The Thing, which is one of my favorite films. Freaking amazing. Once again, sci-fi horror. Can you tell I love sci-fi horror? Yeah. And, uh, according to one review I read, it's supposed to be pretty good. A very solid adventure game. And it's even made by a small group of Finnish game developers, and I can't think of any Finnish game I've ever played. So that's pretty cool. And someone correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know that much about other places in the world, but aren't the Finnish a group of ice elementals that live in vast, towering cities carved out of ice? I thought they were. I'm amazed that they managed to make a game, given that they have ice cubes for fingers. So, right on, that's awesome. Okay, let's go. New game.
Uh, am I crazy, or did that introduction establish basically nothing? That was weird. Hey, Norwegian guy! Are you in there? Ka. There's another polar bear for you to stun. Stun? You mean, with my dashing looks? Ooh. Oh, you mean like with a cattle prod thing, don't you? Hmm. Hmm. I'll be friendly. We're all trapped together in an ice base, right? And the thing might come around and start to take us over, so... Might as well be friendly. While you're still alive. Okay. If you could come back in an hour or two. You think it'll wait while you snooze away? Rise and shine, Norway! And if you don't, I'll shoot that thing myself! You want to get that science project of yours, or whatever it is, done? <sighs> okay, All right. okay, hold on. I'll just get my gear. I'm waiting right here. And don't let Miss Alaska hold you up back there. I have no idea what that means. Something in Norwegian, oh god. Okay, uh, info dump of how to play the game. How to play, mouse navigation and interaction. Uh, okay, let me just look at this briefly. I'm not gonna like study this and take notes. Jeez. Most of this will probably be pretty obvious once you play. Turns light green when you hover over a hotspot. Okay, standard. Action icons appear below the cursor. Actions are activated with mouse buttons. All right, so right, if it's on the right of the cursor, it's the right mouse button. If it's on the left, it's the left, okay. Highlighted, yep. Examine, got it. Okay, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Leave scene, skip walking with double click, okay. Hmm. Inventory. You can open Rune's bag. And by the way, is that a badass name or what? His name is Rune something. I forgot his last name, but Rune? That's awesome. Love clicking on it, the inventory can also be opened and closed by pressing I on your keyboard. Okay, menu. Da, da, da. Enters to advance dialogue. Hold down space to display all the hotspots. Alright, pretty standard. Left click on rune to receive hints on the next objective. Okay. Cool. Um, what about saving? There we go. Okay, so left click will talk to myself. Oh no, left click for hint. I need to get all my polar bear gear. Right click to examine. Rune, I'm assuming that's pronounced Nudson. Well, okay. I'm guessing if you properly pronounced it, it'd probably be something crazy that I can't do, like Knudsen. Or <laughs> Okay, not that bad, but you know, like something crazy with the tongue that I can't do. So with my gringo pronunciation, I'm going to go with Nudsen. Rune Nudsen, 28-year-old Norwegian biologist. Me. And there's the wonderful flag of Norwegia. I love Norwegia. Wonderful country. So wait, can I... <laughs> the left click is use on the bunk. Can I go back to bed? Screw you guys, I'm going back to sleep. I still have things to do. Alright, fair enough. I find myself sleeping a lot less here than back home in Norway. Well, I guess there's always work to do here, huh? More things to drill, more bears to stun. Alright, okay, so this is my inventory. Notebook, multi-tool with compass, and my lighter. I'm trying to quit. You're trying to quit lighters? Why would you want to quit lighters? They're always handy, especially in adventure games. Oh, wow. Okay, got some nice data here. Sedated polar bears. Different dates. H, W, what? H, W, oh, is that height and weight? Sex, initial coordinates, caller IDs, notes. 
16.4. What is that? 16.4. For this? No, there's two on 16. Point... I, I don't know. I probably don't need to look at this yet. Something about sedation. Well, I'm about to stun one, so I actually might need to read this. Don't approach until head down. Minimum two minutes. Uh, severe... What does that say? Severe? S S something breathing. Check heart rate. Remove dart. Clear off after reversal. Ooh, what is this? Alright, so this is bare thesis. I, I don't know what the thesis is. This just appears to be data. Notes and photos. Can't really read this. Interview with Norwegian biologist... Uh, something... Rune Nudsen. Okay, that's me. Now a 27-year-old biology major. Ooh, it said I was 28, so this was from maybe a year ago. Did his master's thesis a few years back studying a... Uh, skuas? <laughs> In one of the most hostile places on Earth. Svalbard Arca... Oh, fuck. Sval... Svalbard... Archipelago? I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I know I'm I'm mispronouncing everything, forgive me. While leading a eight-man to mountaineering mission, we got Rune preparing for his next expedition and took the time to ask him about his aspirations. Joseph, looking at you face to face, I can definitely see a resemblance to Nansen. What is your relationship to him and other legendary Norwegian explorers? Rune, well, there's no direct kinship, or at least not one that I know of, but I think the same fire is there. Like Nansen, I don't want to make any compromises. He was willing to give all he had to study the mysteries of the North. The early explorers were the ultimate nonconformists, and that's something I want to emulate myself. Joseph. Nansen was also known for his athletic prowess. Is that the reason why you combined mountaineering with your studies? Rune. Actually, it was the other way around. I think I was about 16 when I and a couple of my friends founded an ice climbing club, the uh, <laughs> do you want me to try to pronounce that? Trey Comp... It's so blurry. I can't even really read the letters. Trey Comp... Something... Fron... Narvik... Fujigudigavug... Club? I didn't have any plans for studying biology back then. However, that was what sparked my interest in the Arctic nature. Joseph. And it was the same club that organized the Svalbard... Expedition? I'm just getting the feeling that it's not actually pronounced Svalbard, because I know I've heard it pronounced before, but I can't remember it. Rune. Yes, it was a given It was a given to go there as a club, as we had always dreamed about our own expedition. Still, what I and the others didn't want was just to go for an adventure. As human beings, we all have an obligation for this planet. I was preparing my masters back then, and I had heard about a need to study the changes in Skua's nesting in Svalbard. So we felt that it was an important mission to take on and justify our trek. Joseph, and the rest is history. Y you paper was... Okay, that's meant to be your. Your paper was highly referenced, and you also secured a scholarship. Is it too early to talk about that? Rune, the grant is for studying polar bears, and I will do the relevant field studies in Greenland. Currently, I'm in the process of finding the logistical support I need, so for all the romantic era... Dila what does that say? Dila Tantis and patrons reading this. Joseph, I want to wish you good luck with that. We will keep an eye out for you, and thank you for the interview. See, that is what I love about adventure games. Stuff like this. I know a lot of people would be bored stiff at reading an article, but I absolutely love that. That is backstory. Backstory that you don't have to read, but I just chose to, and it fits in with the universe, it makes sense. You know, it's not some bizarre note explaining my past history, it's not some weird flashback, it's an actual article that makes sense within this universe that I would have, and it told me all sorts of things. This was from a little while ago, he got a scholarship to study polar bears, that explains what I'm doing here now, I got a scholarship to do this, and that's what I'm currently doing. That's really cool. I'm super impressed with this game already. Ah, adventure games. Don't worry, though. I'm sure the goodness of this will be 
probably negated by some ridiculous puzzle. But for now, let's just bask in the glow of a wonderful note. The glow of reading a wonderful, interesting, fascinating note in an adventure game. Ah, <sighs> that was nice. All right. And one of my other most favorite things to do in adventure games is click on every single thing in people's rooms. It's so fun just to hear their descriptions. Something like, uh, there must be something voyeuristic about it, about wanting to explore people's rooms and click on everything from the soda cans to the posters. But I love it. All right, so what have we got here? Wait a minute, I don't think I examined the multi-tool. It has a knife blade, a file, a couple of screwdrivers, and a compass. My current heading in degrees is 270. Wait, is it actually updated live? Oh god, it is. Wow, my current heading is 196. I guess that's probably going to come in handy at some point. Beer can. Good stuff. I'll take your word for it because I can't taste it. For it is not but pixels. Twilight of the Polar Bears. Outside temperature is 5 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. That's minus 15. Holy shit, that's cold. Damn. Yeah, wow. I think the lowest it's ever gotten where I live is probably in the low 30s. At most, Fahrenheit. Damn. Lahambra and Mahatska poster. Some musician, I assume? A fusion jazz band my brother plays accordion in. They suck, but in a cool way. <laughs> How do you suck in a cool way? Huh. Radiator. Probably what has stopped me from getting frostbite in the night. An electric radiator powered by a gen set unit. Calendar. I got that from the Bergen Zoological Museum. I don't know what that is. Crampons. I don't know what a crampon is. Is it related to a crouton or a tampon? Crampon. Front pointing crampons for ice climbing. Hopefully I'll get to use them. Wait, is that the, like those spiky things that stick into the ice? I don't know. It's hard to see from here. I just realized his shower curtain has a duck all over it. That's adorable! The next resident should sweep out the corners and replace the burned out light bulb in there. Hmm. Empty bottles. I should have brought more. Wait. Y you should have brought more empty bottles or you should have brought more filled ones because now they're empty? Which one? I need to know. Please tell me. Vacuum flask. That's where I keep my writing enthusiasm. Okay, between the empty bottles and that remark and the beer can, I get the impression that he's a drunkard. <laughs> it sure seems like it. Triangulation device. I made that. It runs on USB power and listens to low band frequency slots. Huh. Sounds neat. I'll take it. Oh, I don't need it. Computer. Looks like it's rocking a 10-inch screen. I had to install the old OS to get the polar bear tracking app to work. Well, that blows. I think that might be everything. Oh, no, not this. Explorers like Rewald Amundsen and... <laughs> fuck. Frit... How the fuck do you pronounce that? Fridge. Someone clarify. How do you pronounce these three letters next to each other? D T J. Fridigit. Fridig. Fridigitif. Fridigitif. No. I I'm pretty sure you're supposed to like, like smooth over it. You know, you kind of like remove some letters and you just don't pronounce them. But I don't know which ones to remove. I'm gonna call them fridge off. Yes, Fridge Off. Fridge Off Nansen always brought a flag, so that was a given. Hmm.
Alright, so I need to get my stuff, right? I need to get all my polar bear gear. Obviously, it is not in my room, so let's go. Hey, this game has really good art. Some seriously good backgrounds and uh, character models, too. A dry chemical extinguisher. Surprisingly, it still seems to be valid. The communal underwear disposal unit. Nova Anawak, micro paleontologist. Micro paleontologist. I've heard of a paleontologist, never a micro paleontologist. That sounds cool. Well, obviously I need to get my gear and not talk to every single person in this place. So, gotta find my gear, but not before I explore around a bit more. It's warm. I would hope so. It's five degrees Fahrenheit outside. Team two photograph. These are the guys from the previous team. Hmm. I don't suppose they all died from a mysterious thing? And you came back and found the place all like burnt out and exploded? Hmm. Better watch out for that. Postcards, mostly. It's Al's room. Al Schumann. Exploration Technician. Alright, what have we got on this bulletin board? I... L <laughs> I keep saying this, but there's something I love about this. Like, when you have something like this, it's just... It's just like real life, and it's filled with all these little tidbits, bits of information, and you can look at all of them. Even though they're probably not really super important, I just love it. Alright, well this is obviously an ancient calendar, because that says 1982. <laughs> totally, no more porn, please. Wait a minute. Do they get internet out here? Well, I guess it'd be satellite internet, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you could get satellite internet everywhere, I think. It'd be pretty damn expensive, though. Got some keys. Birthday card. I wonder whose birthday card it is. Looks like it arrived fairly recently. Let's find out. Uh... I literally can't read that text. Hey, something, we, s stuff. I, I can't really read cursive. But it's for Nova Anamanaka, whatever her name is. Alright, so it's a birthday card for Anna. Mm -hmm. Polar bears get bored too. Okay. <laughs> oh, it looks like a pen on some sort of a string device holding ring thing. What is this technology? Bum, bum, bum. Oh yeah, Stars and Tripes, America! Fuck yeah! Did I just say Stars and Tripes? I meant to say Stripes. I don't even know what that is. Is that like a notepad or something? Oh wait, her name isn't Anna, it's Nova Anna Walk. Okay, so Nova. God, that's an amazing name, too. Alright, so so far we have two amazing names. We have Rune and Nova. Wouldn't it be awesome to be called Nova? Team 1 photograph. The team that initially set up the EPGE operation here. Alright, so they set it up, they were the next team, and then I assume we are the third team? Spare room. It's empty. It's for visitors. Wait, you mean I receive no answer from the spare room with nothing in it? Mysterious. Hmm. Oh yeah, I suppose I should actually be getting ready, right? Alright, that's to the garage. Where's my stuff? Oh, I guess that's Nova. Well, he spotted another polar bear outside. Not now, Rune. Polaris. Come in, Polaris. Go ahead, we hear you. 
I found oil deep down a crevasse near Testrill 2. It's an open pit, Nova. I found seep oil. But that's... that's wonderful. And there's more to the story. I also ran into something unexpected. But I'd better tell you in person. I'll be there soon. While you wait, you can contact Thule. We need to announce this right away. What was unexpected? Should I tell them something else? Just tell them we're going to make the shareholders happy and the liberals angry pretty soon. Okay, where are you now? A few miles northeast of Polaris. But speaking of tree huggers, is that Norwegian chap still bothering you? <laughs> oh no, he's not. Not at all. I'm right here. What? I tell you, I haven't seen such an obvious crush since my prom night, and that's been a while. He's in the room, Al. Shut it. He's there? Well, I think that was all. See you soon. Over and out. So he found oil. I don't know what that last part was about, though. For some reason, he seemed to think that you have a bit of a crush on me. I told him that you've been bumping into me during my coffee breaks. Crush? No, I... I just... I mean, it would be cool if we still continued to have accidental run-ins. Come on, is that how they do it in Oslo? Whoops, I think I left the line open. And what a thoughtful mistake it was. This has been a comedy gold mine. <laughs> Look, maybe Rune can fix you something nice in the canteen. Uh, let's say tomorrow. I'll even throw in some fuel and ammo for Tully. Uh, for distraction, you know. I could do that. Good. Do I have a say in this? Not really. Can you cook, Rune? That's my girl. Rune, I happen to know what she likes, but I'll fill you in later. Now is not the time. Okay, over and out. Over and out. So, did you have anything else in mind? Tully spotted another polar bear outside. Polar bear research on a station owned by a godless oil company. You know, this might be the biggest oil discovery of our careers. While you are trying to save the Arctic. That's... A serious conflict of interest, I know. I love ice climbing and the Arctic. That's why I'm here. Did my master's measuring skua eggs in Svalbard. As for the company, me being here is just a cheap publicity trick. I'll play along and get my thesis done. But maybe I should get moving. That bear won't be around forever. Be careful. Everything Tully knows about polar bears comes from cola commercials. <laughs> oh, well, it's nice to know I didn't uh, really mispronounce Svalbard. I mean, he had kind of like a little twist on it, slightly, that I wouldn't even know how to begin replicating, but... The basic pronunciation is Svalbard. So cool, at least I didn't ruin that. And yes, I do know how to cook. I can make the best toast you've ever had. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to make risotto. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. I'm supposed to get my stuff. I don't think it's going to be in the kitchen. Are those the only ways to go? It's either to the kitchen or back to the garage? Well, whatever. They can wait. I'm going to take my time and examine every damn thing in this room. Because my modus operandi or whatever of playing adventure games is take it nice and slow and absorb everything. Look at this ceiling fan. I suppose it's mainly for aesthetic effect. Yeah, I guess... When it's really cold, you don't really need a fan, do you? You wouldn't really want a fan. Why is it even on? It's weird. Inuit harpoon. It's supposed to be the head of an Inuit harpoon. The tip is in pieces. Hmm. Dartboard. Al's very good with darts. I'd rather play... Canasta? I don't even know what that is. Is it... Is that some sport from Norwegia? I don't like Norwegia sports. I, I like sports with balls. You like throw balls and like the ones where you kick balls and you hit balls and stuff. I like balls. Yeah. Small paintings. Station. Wait, what? Stations construction photos from a long time before Euler Petroleum? I I'd like to 
point out an incong incongruity here. Painting. Photo. Paintings. Photos. Um, do these developers really not know the difference between a painting and a photo? I'm uninstalling this game immediately. Two out of five stars. Terrible game. Positions control. Oh, yeah, just the same. Do, 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 do. Fishing photograph. That's Al Schumann and Bob Euler on a fishing trip eons ago. Bar painting. What? Okay, it's the same description as the others? Okay. Strange. Leftovers? There's not much to do there's not much to do in the evening other than getting wasted and stuffing your face. <laughs> Is that what everyone does here? They just like stuff their face, get drunk, and watch porn? Just how much work are they getting done? Hmm. Metal structure. Tell me about the metal structure. It's for the comm antenna overhead. Cool. Bar sign. We're always open. Nova Anawak. Badass name. They say she can pinpoint an oil reservoir. Reservoir. I can't talk tonight. By analyzing the microscopic fossils in the drill samples. Oh. Pinpoint an oil reservoir by analyzing the microscopic fossils in the drill samples. Huh. I, I'm just trying to think. I wonder what microscopic fossils you would find, because... Oil is made from, what, like the decomposition and compaction or whatever of, like, decaying matter and stuff? Huh. Interesting, I... Hadn't even thought of using microscopic fossils to tell that there's oil reservoirs, but that actually makes sense. Radio set. Hopefully no one smashes it, like in the thing. Station receiver slash transmitter. I have some skill with it. Good. You can call for help when you all start dying. Nothing to watch but DVDs. Yeah, I guess they don't get cable few odd DVDs we have in here. Some are even watchable. Painting of a house. Are you serious? Painting of a house. Station's construction photos from a... Okay. You know, if you don't have a proper description for it, you could just not add it to the descriptions. You know that, right, game developers? It's okay. Not everything has to be a hotspot. Alright, I think that's everything. It's been 35 minutes, and I still haven't even gone to put on my gear. Uh, well, the kitchen can't be the right way, so I guess I go to the garage. I guess this looks right, maybe? Is someone living in here? Tolly's tent? Is someone living in the garage? Are they overstaffed? Equipment stowed out of the way. Don't need anything from there. Alright, where's my stuff? Press drill. There's enough machinery in here to keep this place self-sufficient. They don't have to fly in every piece of custom equipment. Yeah, for something so out of the way, it would be important to be self-sufficient. Because anytime you need to transport supplies, it is going to cost a shit ton of money. Grinding machine. The crew use it to make metal frames for oil exploration equipment. Ladder. There's a hatch to the roof up there. Tools. An array of tools. Dolly's tent. He likes to sleep in a tent, just like me when I was four. <laughs> Collection of buckets, discarded items, and corporate gifts. Ooh, gasoline. 20 liters of fuel. That's obviously going to come in handy. To the lobby. Rusty barrels. There's no way to haul all the garbage out of here. Oh yeah, actually. Yet another thing I hadn't even considered. When you're in a remote place like this, you don't exactly have garbage pickup every week, do you? 
Hmm. All right. Okay. I... Yeah, this has got to be where I get my stuff. Okay. Tranquilizer rifle. Definitely need that. A breech loader I have on loan from Bergen University. I'll take that. Thank you. That's in here, right? Yep. There it is. What's the other one? Let's get out of the way. A Tax 12. I don't know what that is. A polar bear deterrent. We keep it loaded with slugs. Uh, that doesn't sound like a deterrent. That sounds like a killer. Exploration equipment. I have no idea what that's for. Looks like a car radio. It does. Packaging tape. That'll come in handy. Yep, can I take it? There's, n There's no way you can have an adventure game without duct tape. I mean, come on. Rope. Ice climbing rope. I'll take that. And I'm going to need a coat, obviously. What a warm, fuzzy feeling it is to put on a preheated coat. Oh, they're preheated. Nice. Grab a coat when I go out. Okay. Drying closets. Yet another thing I hadn't thought of. They would probably be wet when you come back in, wouldn't they? So you dry them and heat them. That totally makes sense. EPGE flags. They're used as marker at oil survey sites. EPGE stands for Euler Petroleum Greenland Expedition. Do I need one? Al can probably spare one. Okay. To laboratory. Laboratory. Washing machine. Just about the only device in here I can operate. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought you could operate the radio pretty well. What are you talking about, man? Alright, is that all I need? Do I just go outside? Yeah, I think that's everything. Hey, Rune! Over here! You, you looking to sell me something? You, you got something? Show me what's under the jacket, man. Come on. I, I need a fix. Irish all-round mechanic. Oh, wait. He's Irish? Was that supposed to be an Irish accent I just heard? Because it didn't sound like one. Let's hear him speak. Where is it? Back there, behind the station. I think it tried to stalk me, so I took off. Then it's probably a male, so let's be very careful. We need some real firepower. There's a 12-gauge Tax-12 inside with auto mode. Unloads the clip in about two seconds. I'm going to stun it. I know, but if you really want to be on the safe side, you'll let me take the shot. Well, hell no, obviously. Um... How about fuck you, no? Not a chance. I'll be your spotter then. That's better. Okay, is that seriously supposed to be an Irish accent he's doing? Because it sounds like... I don't know, like a light Brooklyn accent or something? It doesn't even sound vaguely Irish. Like, I can't even criticize the voice actor, because it doesn't even sound like the voice actor tried to sound Irish. It sounds like Brooklyn or something. Slightly. Here, let's, let's listen to him talk some more. Tell me about your background. What are you doing here in the middle of Greenland? Yeah, just rub it in, Knudsen. My paps worked in EP offshore. This was the first logical career option. Wait, his last name is pronounced Knudsen? I'm probably going to forget that in like two seconds. Rune Knudsen. Alright, well, that was a lovely conversation, Ted, or whatever your name is. It is Ted. Good, I remembered his name. All right, stalking around, huh? Am I supposed to go up? I'm supposed to go up, right? Barrel. It's a makeshift ashtray. Cool. Let's get a look at this thing. There it is. He's a big one, all right. Somewhat over 200 kilos, I'd say. And guess what? He is a she. Does that matter? More than one would think. 
Tracking collars can't be fitted to males. Their necks are wider than their heads. Seriously? Are they really wider than their heads? I'm gonna have to look that up, because that I've never heard that before. But if true, it obviously would make it so you can't put a collar on, because then it wouldn't stay. Hmm. Alright, can I shoot it from here? Well, before that, let's take a look around. I just realized this place is absolutely beautiful. Northern Ridges. Beyond that ridge is the Greenland Sea. Snow fence. A lot of snow packed by in the fence. Snow fence. Is that to protect the base? Because it seems awfully far away. Wouldn't that only protect snow if it's going practically horizontal? Hmm. Icy roof. A slippery slope. Sleigh dog cage. They used to keep a ten dog team in there. Alright. Alright. She must be over two and a half meters long. That's impressive for a female. You know, I actually don't know if there's fail states in this game. Like, I don't know if you can fail and die and lose. So, I'm actually going to save it before I try to shoot it. Do, 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 do. Okay. I guess just use, uh, yeah. Hopefully I can hit it from here. chamber's empty. Why is it empty? Well, shit. Um, that's a problem. Uh, hey buddy, do you have any ammo? God, it's beautiful out here. Hurry up, my balls are freezing. Thank you. I, I was just admiring the view and now you're talking about your balls. Wonderful. Fuck you, Ted. Just fuck you, Ted. Are you gonna shoot it or what? Hold on, I'll just need to get the rest of the gear. Alright, well... Check the lobby again? I didn't see any ammo. But that is the logical place for it to be. After all, you should keep ammo next to the gun, right? I guess I'll check the basement. The basement. Yeah, let's check the basement. Ooh, yep, I definitely supplies. Uh, might just be food, though. What's that? Ice... Ice cream box. Ooh. There's all the ice cream we've got. Well, the ice part of it shouldn't be a problem. The real hard part is the cream. Sounds drippy. Meat. We just carve pieces out of it. Mmm, sounds delicious. Wait a minute. <laughs> Maple. Well, oh, whoops, I just pressed space. I didn't mean to, but I'm actually glad I did. Okay. Well, I think I'll fully explore the environment first, as well as I can, and then press space to see if I've missed anything. Extinguisher. An old CO2 extinguisher. Can I take it? No. So, yeah, maple syrup, meringue powder. I think I'm actually going to have to bake for her, like I'm actually going to have to do it in-game. Cool, well, I actually do have some baking skills, so I'm curious what I'm going to be making. At the moment, though, it looks like the only thing here is sponge... Wait, sponge cake. What, like, like pre-made sponge cake? Sponge cake, maple syrup, and meringue powder. What the hell are you going to do with that? Uh, sponge cake pancakes? I don't even know what meringue powder is. I know what meringue is, but not meringue powder. Meat hook. A two-sided hook. Sacrificial anode? What? What the heck is a sacrificial anode? 
It prevents corrosion of the pump casing. It's either zinc or magnesium. Oh. I remember seeing something like that. On, like, oh, I don't remember where it was. It was on some TV show. These things that, like, took all of the corrosion. And you had to replace them because, of course, they were taking the corrosion. Huh. Alright, well, no ammo. Man, I'm such a shitty worker, aren't I? He calls me over to take care of a polar bear, and I'm taking, like, an hour and looking at the paintings and smelling the roses. Okay. Maybe there's some ammo in the laboratory? I don't think I'm gonna find ammo in here. Stone po Yeah, ye Yeah, this is the laboratory. It's not the gunnerarium. Nope. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope. Alright, let me go back out. Because I wonder if it might be around here, like Station Yard. Two Station Yard, two Station Yard. Okay, so just one place to go, Station Yard. No, I'll end up as bear food. Okay, never mind, it's inside. Alright, maybe in the garage? What have we got? Wares? Rusty stuff? What about in the stored wares? Wouldn't it be up there? I don't need anything from there. Uh, you sure about that? I'm not going to shoot that. <sighs> Grinding machine, table saw, broom. Nope, nope, nope. Window. Weather has been very good the whole time I've been here. Good for you. Good for you. Hatch and mechanical hoist. There's no way to store the equipment up there without the crane. And that leads to the icy roof. Alright, let's keep going back. Where is the ammo? Maybe I need to talk to someone. Maybe it's in the kitchen? Wait a minute, there, I just realized there's a note on my door. Rune Knudsen, biologist, mountaineer, philanthropist. Uh, philanthropist. Wait, that's the note? Oh, I guess they didn't have the placard for me, so they wrote the note to put my name up there? Okay, I thought someone, like, left that for me to read. I was very confused. Uh... Nova, you home? She's in the kitchen, so obviously she's not going to answer. Nova, are you in there? What about Al? I think he was the one talking to me on the radio, wasn't he? So he's probably not going to answer. Al. Nope. Okay, to the kitchen. Let's go talk to Nova, see if she knows where some ammo is. I don't want to break her workflow. Alright. Let's go into the kitchen. Actually, let me make sure I got everything here. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, oh, didn't do look at the books. That's our library. Okay, to the kitchen. I just went through the wall. Microwave oven. If that thing broke down, we'd be in trouble. These people don't know how to cook. Hopefully that doesn't include you, because you're going to have to be baking. Water tap. Water tastes great. We melt it from the permafrost below the station. Damn, that is some fresh water. Ventilation hood. A lot of attention has been paid to the station's ventilation. I bet it has. You don't want too much heat getting out. At the same time, you don't want to suffocate. It's nicely retro. We have a huge food stockpile downstairs. Yeah, that thing looks like it came from the 40s or something. There's a note. 
That's a less than polite note warning Tully to keep away from Al's sandwiches. Hmm, got a little food rivalry going on. Is there ammo in here? Ammo in the fridge? Nope. Apparently you do not refrigerate tranquilizer darts. Hmm. Carpet. Uh, that's not a carpet, that's a rug. I guess that all the carpet Euler Petroleum... I guess that is all the carpet Euler Petroleum could afford. <laughs> Just like a little one foot by one foot square. Cheap asses. Okay, so, um, where's the ammo? I definitely don't have it on me. It wasn't in my room. Nope. It's gotta be somewhere in here. Maybe it is in the laboratory? Could it be? I mean, that's like the one thing I haven't explored. I wonder if I'm going to keep up my... The streak I seem to have where I get stuck on, like, the first puzzle of every adventure game. Alright, what have we got in here? I'm gonna ignore all this stuff for now and just look for ammo. Ammo, ammo, ammo. Uh, office Buddha? <laughs> uh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sedative gear. Gear set that I use for knocking down and tracking polar bears. Tranquilizer needles. An oximeter. Oximeter. Oximeter, oximeter, not sure how to pronounce that one. Tracking colors and reversal syringes. Sweet. Alright, I might want to have a look at my notebook before I actually do this. I believe there are some relevant notes. Alright, sedative needles combined with that. There we go. Alright, tell me about this stuff. They come in various sizes, filled with xylazine. Xylazine? And are sealed hermetically. Oximeter, digital pulse meter that clips directly to mucosa. Tracking collar. Retrieving this will be the hard part. After that, it's just a matter of analyzing the satellite data. Reversal agent. It's dangerous to leave polar bears sedated. I use this fast-acting reversal agent to wake them up. Oh, okay, I was wondering what it was reversing. That makes sense. Sedate it for as long as it takes to put on the collar. And then reverse it. Okay. I wonder why it's dangerous to leave them sedated. Is it just... does it... maybe it slows their heart rate so they might freeze to death? Or maybe they just starve or something? I don't... I don't know. Or maybe the sedative just isn't meant to be used for a long time? Hmm. Okay, notebook. Hmm. Let's read the notes for a couple of these bears. Both malnourished big sores on females' paw pads. Right, female with ringed seal's carcass, three inch claws. Huh. Remove dart. Alright, dosage. Uh, xylazine two times. Uh, I wonder if I'm actually supposed to read this. Time following administration. Alright, so the pulse was 40, about 40, after 60 minutes? I'm assuming that's minutes and not seconds. Yeah, that's gotta be minutes. Alright, what the hell, let's just do it. 
Gonna save again. Here we go. Uh, watch out, Ted. Ted, Ted, Ted. I just shot like one inch to the left of his shoulder. Good kill. It hit her right where it was supposed to. Just above the shoulder blade. Let's give the sedative some time to kick in and then have a closer look. It wasn't a kill you, jackass. It's a freaking tranquilizer dart. Look at that maw. It can easily crush a seal's skull or drag a small beluga whale out of the sea. Hardcore. Mighty nasty smell. It shouldn't be that bad. Let's see what's wrong. Hmm. So it has a strangely bad smell about it. I see some blood around its mouth, too. Did it just eat something, or is it bleeding? Okay. Th what the fuck did I just click? Oh I, I, oh, I clicked out of the scene. Okay. I think we're supposed to check its heart rate, right? Oh, use it on the mouth? It said it was supposed to be used on like a mucosa, so mouth? There we go. Art 41. 41. Wait, so if its pulse is actually 41, then that means it's been like... 45 minutes about? Like 40 minutes, roughly? Okay, not that that really matters. Hmm. Body. Not much fat underneath the fur. She's malnourished. Aww. Mouth? There's the reason for the smell. The right quadrant mandibular canine is chipped. The what? A fang. The tooth is infected and the infection is spreading. Look at the dark spots on the gums. Aw, oh, shit. Is there anything we can do about that? I... <laughs> What would you do about that? Do dental surgery in the snow before it wakes up? Give it antibiotics? Can I mean, maybe you could do that under the right circumstances, but we don't have the equipment for that, do we? Pulse is a little over 40. That's normal for a sleeping animal. Neck. The long neck is an evolutionary adaptation adaptation for swimming. Is it? Is that... So how does the long neck help with that? Does that allow you to keep your neck above water while swimming? I could see that. Body? Oh yeah, I already looked at that. Sedative dart. Bullseye. Oh yeah, we can take that out now, can't we? Careful! Relax. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry, you're not going to get mauled to death. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Pause. Both paw pads look clean. Alright, let's uh, slap the collar on. That's a satellite tracker? Yes, but it transmits only triangulation data. The collar will come off after a few weeks. After that, I'll retrieve it. We're done here. She can't eat with that tooth. That's why she's so badly malnourished. We need to contact the veterinary service tomorrow. Are you gonna keep her on a leash until then? Let's haul her to that old sled dog cage to wait for them. You stay here and guard her. I'll figure out a way to do it. What if she starts moving before that? I'd keep my distance. She'll be rather pissed off when she wakes up. <laughs> well, I'm assu I I mean, I've never, like, sedated an animal, but I would assume that they wake up... Uh, like, gradually, still under the effects of sedation, so you'd have some warning, I would think? Unless they just sleep peacefully for a while, as if they're taking a nap, and then they can wake up, you know, after the effects are fully gone? I, I don't know. Alright, well, I'm glad we're actually going to help her. Because, yeah, if we leave her as she is, she's obviously going to die. From infection or from just malnourishment. 
Alright, so we need to move her. There's got to be a sled or something we can use to push, pull her. Slay Dog Age, it has housed tens of huskies during the time before motorized transportation. The latch looks like it's still working. Alright, let's open that up. Cage pillar, a sturdy looking roof support pillar. Why is that a hotspot? Is that relevant somehow? Hmm. Alright, gasoline tank, fuel pump. Yeah, I need a motorized something or other. Gasoline tank, fuel for generating electricity and for vehicles. Fuel pump, just like in service stations. Oh, solar panels. Those are largely decorative, despite the size. Really? Well, yeah, I guess solar panels really don't make that much energy. Or they don't gather that much energy, I should say. South Peaks, those are none Tucks, rugged peaks pushing through glacial ice. Calm Tower, satellite link, the only way to contact the outside world. Personally, I like the isolation in here. Yeah, the isolation is nice. Until everyone starts dying. And then you want to go back to civilization. To Station West. To generator. Alright, let's go to the generator. Now we have free reign of the place. Now that the uh, bear is not out and about. Generator cabinet, judging from the sound, it's running. Excellent. Don't need to touch it. Alright, see if there's some sort of a vehicle I can use. Perhaps in the garage. Actually, didn't I just look in the garage and there was nothing? Snow plow. Could that be used to push her? That, that, no, that doesn't really make any sense. It's kind of janky. I mean, even if you could push her to the cage door, how would you actually get her inside? Garage door, it operates electrically. Without the remote, it can only be opened from the inside. The remote, which I don't have. Kitchen plow, one of Tolly's bigger toys. Right, let's go to the kitchen side. Hello. Exactly what I was looking for. Snowmobile. An age-old army surplus snowmobile. Tolly has the keys. Alright, where is Tolly? Wait, is Tolly Ted? Is it Ted Tolly? Is that his name? The guy I was just with? To cage. Alright, let's just go all the way around. I want to get the lay of the land and figure out what's around here. Okay. Oh yeah, that is Tolly. Tolly. Have you figured out how to move her? That thing will get up any minute. I... Oh, I actually get to type? Uh... Tractor beam. Ain't gonna work. Other <laughs> ideas? Uh, let's think. Tele... Yes, teleportation. Ain't gonna work. Other ideas? Snowmobile? Let's take the snowmobile and pull her. That might work. I've never played a game that actually had you enter in words to solve puzzles. Interesting. The last game I can remember I, that I've ever played that had any sort of a system like that was... It was one of the Fallout games. Either the first one or the second one. I remember there's some sort of a weird thing like... It, it had a typical... I th yeah, it had a typical dialogue tree type system. But then I think there was also an additional like type of verb or something. Or, or type of topic name. And you can get like hidden, hidden little topics... Sometimes like, it was really funky, and it honestly it sucked, but but yeah, that's the only other game I've ever seen that had any sort of a system like that. That's interesting. 
All right, well... Oh, I have rope, don't I? Yeah, I have rope. I attach it to the bear? That would hurt her? It would? Okay, what do I use? Duct tape? <laughs> I don't think that would lead to anything useful. Okay, fair enough. Tie rope to snowmobile. Wait, tie rope to snowmobile snowmobile? Tie rope to snowmobile totally on snowmobile? What? Wait, what am I doing? Tie rope to snowmobile snowmobile snowmobile. What? What did I just do? Um... Tie rope to snowmobile? Tie rope to snowmobile polar bear. That would hurt her. Okay, so I can connect it. Okay, tie rope to... <laughs> tie Tolly to his own snowmobile. Snowmobile, snowmobile, snowmobile. Nope, didn't work. Okay, what am I doing? What do you think? I've got nothing to add. You be the MacGyver here, Viking. I'll pull the throttle when you're ready. Gee, thank you, dick. Alright, do we need to create more room? Like, it says pillar. Is that something I could just yank out? To tie the rope straight to the pillar. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Ratchet strap. Oh, I took it. Okay. Can I put it on the polar bear? Yeah, that should be better. Rope is kind of rounded. The straps should definitely distribute the weight better. Okay, I see. Alright. Snowmobile... Strap polar bear? Can't turn inside the cage. Okay, I think I do need to rip it out, so... Snowmobile... Pillar? Wait, I need a third item? What? I need to connect it to three different things? Hmm. What am I... Am I doing like a pulley type system? Like... Here... To here... Here? Bingo! Okay. Okay, I get it. Oh, the pillar's like in the middle of the cage. See, if I could have seen that, if they had like a different camera angle so I could see where the pillar actually was, that would have been a lot clearer. The petroleum is gonna love her. We are not telling them. We need to do what we can to help her. I'm gonna go take a leak. Lovely as always, Ted. Nice talking to you. I was looking at the beautiful vista and you talked about your balls. And now we just possibly saved a polar bear's life and now you're talking about taking a piss. And by the way, you're not even Irish. Yeah, I said it. You're not Irish. Fucking fake Irishman. Wait a minute, what am I supposed to be doing? There should be antibiotics somewhere in the lab. Okay, sweet. Saving game. Oh, okay, I guess there's an autosave system. Alright, let's go give her some antibiotics. Antibiotics. I assume they're injection and not the swallowing pill type? Because she's kind of sedated, so I don't think she's going to be able to swallow anything. All right, distilled water, yep, yep, yep. Antibiotic, oh, medical locker, it's gotta be there. Heavy looking security locker containing various chemicals for research and medical purposes. Open that up, hopefully it's not locked, although it does look like it has a keyhole. 
Oh, sweet, unlocked. Antibiotics. Here it is. Psyllum... Uh... Psyllomicillin antibiotic, a liquid penicillin. She weighs about 200 kilograms. Uh... 1,000 milligrams a day, oral or intramuscular should do it. But that means I would need to keep her in a very small cage for at least 14 days. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think she'd like to be kept in a cage. I'll contact Thule first, first thing in the morning. Make some room. Samples coming through. Samples? Is that Al? Rune. Al. Pretty brisk weather out there. Leave no skin exposed. What do you got there, Gramps? Early Christmas. A few hours ago, I was roaming the glacier using the crevasse radar. No magnetometrics or anything. Suddenly, the thing starts bleeping, and I hit the brakes. Went outside and found myself on the edge of the nastiest crevasse ever. Holy shit! And that's not even the hairiest part. Glanced down, and there it was. Deep in the hole, a bubbling pool of crude oil. Again, no transient electromagnetics, Telerix, or anything. Just stumbled on it. So I figured there's more to this story. Tied myself to the six-wheeler's winch, and went down. You fucking went down the crevasse? Alone? And with that trunk of yours? Yes, Tully. I bloody went all the way. Let's say I had a hunch of an old oil wizard, did some surface sampling, looked around, and found these. What the hell is that? Um... Unsettling, isn't it? It was a sacrificial site of some kind. That thigh bone. It's human. Yes, there were plenty of body parts down there but I didn't want to stick my nose any deeper than I already had. What do you think, Rune? Huh. Well, it's obviously a very important find. At the same time, I have no expertise in this area. Um... Work about the climate change. Is that that they couldn't have survived? Or, I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Let's do that one, because I'm curious. This is a prime example of climate change. You'll be dodging crevasses more and more. I knew you'd say that. But what about the find? The symbols look like some sort of elaborate writing, but it's not really my field. If you want a real analysis, we'll need to contact a paleoanthropologist. Maybe, but let's not be hasty here. The fine could mean big bucks for all of us, so let's not draw any unnecessary attention to it. Tully? Right on, Gramps. Last time I checked, we were on an oil research station, not some fancy university. You are not going to believe this. Euler himself is coming here. Bob? They're sending Bob? No, much worse. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I'll be in my room. What the hell was that? Alistair Euler, the son of the company founder, is coming here. I've known Bob a long time, and in this case, the apple has landed far off. <laughs> oh, he sure got the ice queen ticked off. We have some mutual history together. I'm going out for a smoke. You joining, Gramps? No, thank you. I'll reward myself with a couple of sandwiches. Viking? No, thanks. I'm trying to quit. And if I'm not going to be allowed to contact a real expert, I'll examine those bones myself. Knock yourself out. You do know what your oil find means for Greenland, don't you? Yes, it'll bring in money to the local people, thus giving them tools for pursuing their independence. It'll also have a severe effect on the ecology, not to mention global climate problems. What do you want me to do, Rune? I'm an old guy. For once, I found something worthwhile. Anyway, I suggest you take a look out of your window before going to sleep. There should be powerful aurora in the sky tonight.
That is one hell of a find. I can't believe they actually want to just dismiss it. Don't draw any unnecessary attention to it. Well, I'd say it should have a lot of fucking attention to it. I say it necessitates a hell of a lot of attention. Damn. All right. Well, I'm actually going to end this episode here. Saving game. But yeah, uh, so far, I'm really enjoying the game. So far, every... I mean, it's got good art. It's got pretty damn good voice acting. So far, every puzzle I've encountered has been logical and makes sense. You know, you get the ammo in the laboratory where there's lots of supplies, you know, you got a winch thing and you just put the winch on the thingy and then you pull the polar bear in. So far, everything is actually making sense, which is amazing. I love that, and there's some really good world building, like those articles I was reading and all the detail in the environment and the descriptions. And plus there's a taste of weird things to come with this finding. Don't forget the description about... Hold on, what was it? Everything might seem normal so far, but... Remember powerful Aurorae tonight? High above, the ion storm of the century is gathering, bringing about a strange intermixing of reality and night terrors. It is up to Rune Knudsen, a Norwegian biologist, to take on a desperate struggle against fear and death and to face the primordial force lurking beyond the veiled sky. So there is more to come. I guess, actually, it's kind of like, uh... I'm trying to remember the beginning of The Thing. Didn't The Thing kind of start out gradually? It's been a while since I've seen it. But didn't it start out gradually where, you know, they're just at, like, a research station or whatever the hell they were doing there? And everything's kind of normal, and then things seem a little bit off, and then they start to get a bit creepy, and then everything goes to absolute hell. I think that's the stage we're at right now. Everything's... Just ramping up, you know, everything's pretty normal, aside from this hide and bones, which is an indicator of things to come. So, I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will definitely be back soon.